The Wholeness Network. Awaken to the reality of wholeness. In today's episode, Robin and I discuss some of the vocabulary words used in different energy therapies. Words that, to be honest, I would have judged as weird in the past, but after learning about them in context, I use almost every day. Definitions of energy work or energy therapy or whatever you want to call it was something that tripped me up in the beginning. It took a long time for me to understand what everybody was talking about and how it related to me and what my thoughts and beliefs were. So we're going to take an opportunity to go into some of those vocabulary words, bring some meaning to them, and um, understand them in different contexts that maybe some, one of them will make more sense to, to each of us. So right. tell me a little bit about what your experience was in learning the language. <laughs> It felt like it was a different language in the beginning. They would talk about energy and vibrations and light and healing. And those just hadn't been the words I used a lot in my life prior to this. But I think the first, one of the first words let's talk about is just defining energy. Mm -hmm. So we hear about energy in all different religions. They have all different words for it or all different cultures, I should say. Some people call it chi, some people mm-hmm. call it ki, sometimes you'll hear it as prana, but there is universal life force energy all around us mm-hmm. in this world, and it sustains every living thing. Yeah, it's an unseen force that is something that is almost undescribable, and um, at the very basis of everything is energy it's an energy is a vibration it means that there is I mean a movement happening it's an aliveness that's happening and sometimes people have kind of scoffed at energy this energy field and said that it's just woo woo or it just doesn't mean anything to them pseudoscience yeah if you look at the energy drink industry There are billions of dollars going into energy drinks Mm -hmm. because people feel like they don't have enough energy. If you think of people that need coffee to wake up in the morning or uh, an energy drink to sustain them through Mm -hmm. the day or even all the caffeinated drinks on the market, if you clump those three things as as stimulants for energy... That's billions of dollars people are spending in the world just on their energy levels. So I think we have to accept that our energy level affects us every day and that energy is a real thing. Yeah, and and a need for energy. I'm one of those people (laughs) in that, I can lump into that group. And yes, um, and so that's almost so simple. It seems like whenever they talk about energy, whatever, it seems so obscure, but it really is just energy that this, the stuff you need to move your to function, to function. <laughs> yes. And so when you go into get energy work or energy therapy, it is working on that part of you that helps you throughout the day to accomplish what you need to accomplish, whether it's emotionally, mentally, spiritually, or physically. Right. If there's a deficiency of energy in any of those bodies, then you will feel drained. Yes, yes. And when we can align that and help that come to realize the wholeness of who you are in, in those areas, then there's a feeling of more energy. Yes. There is enough. In fact, that was one of the things I was a wonderful day when I could say, I get sufficient sleep, I get sufficient food. And I just felt that I, that there was a switch over into, I have enough. I receive what I need. Uh And it was, it was a physical part. That was part Mm -hmm. of the physical part, you know, 
And so where I used to be like, okay, how much time? I only had four hours of sleep. I, I'm going to be tired tomorrow. It was, it wasn't, I just, that's kind of gone away for mm-hmm. me, which, because I recognize there's more than just that aspect to it. Yeah. yeah. So even yeah. though I am part of the, <laughs> <laughs> of the billions of dollar industry, <laughs> but it, 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 it's, you know, there's a, there's a duality to me. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that someday. But I like that you're bringing in sleep because there are a lot of things that we can do that affect our energy levels that are just natural. Sleep being one of them. Mm-hmm. If you get enough sleep, you are more likely to have enough energy. If you eat good, healthy foods, right. those are just energy-rich right. foods. Whereas if you eat a lot of processed foods, mm-hmm. they may make you feel more tired. Right. Getting sun. Sun is mm-hmm. a huge way I love to boost my energy. It enlivens me. It seems mm-hmm. to enlarge my capacity to do things. So we can get energy from all sorts of sources. Mm-hmm. But when we, we certainly understand when we don't have enough energy in a day. Right. I can wake up in the morning and think, oh, man, I'm going to be dragging yeah. myself around all day today. I'm so tired. Right. And, um, and that energy can be influenced by a lot of things. Yeah, and that's, that's a good way to look at it. Sometimes by looking at what it isn't, then you can kind of understand some of these <laughs> oh, vocabulary words. Yes, <laughs> yes. So next I want to talk about how that energy translates into our body's energy system because we mm-hmm. are built with an energy system inside mm-hmm. of us. You may have heard of the term chakras. Chakras are funnel-like energy centers in the body we have seven main chakras and they draw in energy all day long from the universe it's nothing we do consciously just like we don't really have to think about breathing Mm -hmm. all day long our body just does it and we function and it happens in the same way our body just draws in energy all day long through the chakras Mm -hmm. we utilize the energy that we need we release any excess energy and if you think of those chakras as big cities in the body or big centers in the body there are also distribution channels in the body once that energy enters our body it's distributed through the body through meridians and so the meridians help us to get that energy everywhere we need right if you think of acupressure or acupuncture Mm -hmm. those are all tapping into the meridian Mm -hmm. system of the body and I always think it's funny when I go in and I have a problem with my shoulder and they stick a needle in my hand right (laughs) how is that gonna help (laughs) in your ear or (laughs) yeah you're what (laughs) what's going on here um but they're tapping into that meridian line that runs from my hand into my shoulder or whatever the case may be that may not even be accurate yeah but um that's what those principles are founded on We also have our aura, which is our energy field that extends beyond our body. And we can be affected greatly by the energy and the auric field as Mm -hmm. well. It also affects us when, for example, if you're in a large crowd and your auric field, which extends two to three or four feet beyond your body, if that auric field passes through someone else's auric field... (laughs) Uh, it can be draining over time. Yeah, there there's, is an exchange. It's felt. It's a drain on the energy. There's an exchange. Mm-hmm. If you've ever been in a crowded place for a long period of time, you may be exhausted after, yeah. and that's from your aura. One of the ways that they've looked at that scientifically is if they were here right now measuring, they could measure your heartbeat in my brain. They would be able to do that. So what's fascinating is that sounds like, okay, you know, whatever. But if you think about how the vibration of that heartbeat, that sound or, you know, it's moving the air or the energy to get to my brain, it's got to pass through something to get there. I mean, that Mm. seems so complicated, but so simple at the same time. That's the idea of the auric field, that there is some kind of, whether it's it's some kind of matter that exists there that allows it to, to travel through. Because if it was going through nothing, there would be a vacuum and it would just, there would be no sound. There would be mm-hmm. nothing for it to travel through. Mm-hmm. So it's, that's part of it that's real, that it's that's scientifically able to be measured is 
the idea that, that we, we are interacting with each other on some kind of energetic, vibrational mm-hmm. way. I, it's fascinating to learn about that. It is. I love that. One of the words that comes up is the word healing. I personally love the word healing because there is no better way to describe how I have got from point A to point B in my life. Or mm-hmm. point, Actually, I would say point A to point W.5. <laughs> Because there's just been, it's healing is the best word for me. I would say my physical body is better than it has ever been as far as the way that I interact with it. And yet, it's not about that. That's not what I would consider the the healing part. But it is being able to have these moments of pain in your life, whether they're physical or emotional or mental or spiritual, and seeing those wounds heal oftentimes people we interact with sometimes they'll throw a dagger and will unmeaning to mm-hmm. but it will feel as if a dagger has attacked us and I was taught to go in the sun and to imagine those daggers you know where those wounds are and to allow the sun to heal those wounds and you know they're emotional wounds mm-hmm. and it was amazing how over time I could feel that healing take place of those those kind of things healing is an important word for me but I understand that when it comes to you know everyday modern language that's very much tied to physical healing Mm -hmm. miraculous healing you know miraculous Mm -hmm. healing Mm -hmm. and although I would say what I've gone through is is a miracle I wouldn't go around saying I've been miraculously healed I know that would come across Mm -hmm. not the right way (laughs) and so healing does have those connotations behind it because someone that can heal uh, it, it's very easy to think that somebody that could heal you would have more power than you, and that is untrue. Everybody is their mm-hmm. own healer. Would would mm-hmm. you agree? Yes, and that's what I wanted to talk about because when we think of healing, really, all that is happening is you're aligning back to truth and wholeness. Right. Your body or your mind or your spirit mm-hmm. is letting go of whatever has disturbed that part of you or Mm. diseased you or affected you and you're coming back into alignment with that perfection of your creation and a lot of times people think like Michelle was saying that a a person is the healer Mm -hmm. but the truth is the client is the healer Mm -hmm. (laughs) because It's the client that has to let go of the emotional issue, release the stress, uh, allow the healing to occur. If I had a client come in that was completely against healing their emotional self, there's no way I could force that upon them. Mm -hmm. I have no control over Mm -hmm. their healing. I can create um, an environment for healing. I can help them make realizations about themselves that would bring awareness. Mm -hmm. But in the end, they have to heal. I really honor people that are willing to go on that healing journey for themselves because they have to own that and Mm -hmm. they have to be responsible for that. And even in the medical field, you know, the doctor can give you medication and they can do things, but it's your body that accepts the, the help. And also releases the the illness. You right. know, it's your body doing the healing. <laughs> Our body is a self healing machine. It is. Yes, you just remove the mm-hmm. contaminants, or you right repair the brokenness, and then the body yeah. does the work. Yes, so it's the same same principle. I love it. Tell me about light. That's something that you like to use the word light, and that comes up, <laughs> and that's something too that's a little like, well, what does she mean by that exactly? And it, it's sometimes it's different for the context you're using it in, but right, but right. I do love that word light. It's it's the essence of everything scientific, right? And I think for me, a lot of times in my mind, because I'm a, a religious person, I think of the light as of Christ, but If you think of just the duality of being here on the planet, that there is light energy, there is dark energy. Mm -hmm. Uh, The dark energy would and dark emotions weigh us down. Mm -hmm. The light energy and the light emotions lift us up. Mm -hmm. So when we tell someone, be filled with light, or, you know, I hope 
I'm sending you light and love. Right. It would just be those higher frequencies mm-hmm. of um, all the good elements of this earth, mm-hmm. all the light properties of this earth, all the uplifting right. things that would raise them up mm-hmm. instead of hold them down. It's beautiful that the definition of light is also is heaviness, weight, but it's also enlightenment or, you know, light is in... Mm-hmm lighting something up illuminating oh yeah i love that illuminating so you're sending them illuminating to brighten their way and light as in weight and letting them you know the yeah. yeah yeah that's great so but that is one of those things where in this world that word is is used in a, in a little different context than everyday my old everyday life. You know, it is used in different contexts. So I love that we're discussing that. And I think to me, understanding vibrations is kind of along that same plane mm-hmm. where light can be a frequency, a vibration is a frequency, and really understanding vibrations is the basis for a lot of things in the energy healing world. Mm-hmm. So there's a principle called entrainment where if something of a certain vibration is brought into an environment of a high vibration where a low vibration is already existing, that low vibration will raise to the higher vibration and they will sync up. And even a simple example of this things syncing up in their vibration is a clock shop. Mm -hmm. They might start that clock shop and Mm -hmm. all 50 clocks are on the wall are ticking at different times. But over time, they will all come into alignment Mm -hmm. so that they're vibrating and ticking at the same moment. That principle of entrainment is really the principle behind a lot of things like color therapy, sound therapy, uh, using crystals or essential oils. Essential oils are the highest vibration in the plant kingdom. And so if you put an essential oil that has a high frequency for love Mm -hmm. on an area of the body that is feeling sadness, maybe the heart, Mm -hmm. there's no way for that heaviness Mm -hmm. to stay. It will rise to the vibration and the level Mm -hmm. of that higher frequency of love. And the same with crystals, they're the highest vibration in the mineral kingdom. A crystal that has the properties that would create courage would dispel uh, any doubt or fear maybe that you're holding on to. Mm -hmm. That was something, you know, crystals was something, I mean, I will admit, years ago, weird, weirdo. (laughs) You know, I remember... I thought so too. uh, (laughs) Crystals. But then when I was explained, you know, in the mineral world, and I think, boy, I take my vitamin every day, and I consider my minerals, and think of them as, you know, natural parts of the world. Yeah, that makes and, a difference. And, yeah, and I have this, I need different minerals. I can't, it's not just a mineral. Different minerals have different properties that my body needs. Yeah. I went, oh, why was I so... <laughs> <laughs> stubborn to think about this why was I so judgmental about this and so now crystals have become part of something that I it's a tool it's just right. it's just yeah. a tool it's sometimes that tool is just for me to stay in the thought of that for the day if I that I just want that particular thought to r- arise into my thoughts throughout the day mm-hmm. I might have a crystal with me just for that purpose just to be a reminder and I just just the intention of it alone is helpful let alone the properties mm-hmm. of that so right right for sure so sound therapy um, and color therapy rely on those same principles where each note holds a different vibration mm-hmm. we can understand that for color each color holds a different vibration We're able to use color and sound as something to help and train the body into a higher balance or a higher state of peace. I love that. Well, I think that's a good start on our vocabulary, and (laughs) I'm sure we'll do more of these. Learning the language was by far something that I had to come into my own about, so I appreciated people being able to explain things 
in different ways. And we'll definitely come back with more. I know there's more that we can talk about. We will Thanks. continue the conversation. Continue the conversation. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Robin. Thank you for listening. Join the community of knowledge and growth at thewholenessnetwork.com.